Tabulum Asiris, Ominous Venere Obgenitor. Oh my god. It was a terrifying dream. You had it too? Yes. The same one. The descent into hell. I need a stiff drink after that nightmare. There'll be more of them. Let's get out of here. Hello and welcome to Hell, a cyberpunk thriller. This is my first time playing through the game, so I have as much of an idea of what's going on as you do. When we start a new game, we have the option of controlling Gideon Ashanti or Rachel Brack. From what I have read of this game, there is no real difference on who you choose. Although I believe there are certain elements of the story that changes, depending on which character you, you control. I've chosen Rachel mainly because from what I have played of this game so far, Gideon seems to take the lead more often than not. Now, this music does sound lovely, but compared to the speech it is rather loud, and unfortunately there are no volume controls, it's either on or off. And the music overshadows the speech a lot, unfortunately. Now, this plays as a standard adventure game. We can move around with the left mouse button, well, we can sort of move around. We have a map that we can utilise at any point, but I won't do that just yet. Replay does what it says on the tin, it replays cutscenes, and we have options to use, give and examine. There is nothing in our inventory at this moment. Maybe we can, I think we can probably switch who we control. But I, I'm going to stick to Rachel for now. So it's March 9th, 2095. And we have, well, we seem to have a healthy bank balance. Although in 70 years time, this could be small change. Anyway, let's make a start. At least you're out of your underwear. You're lucky the hand didn't pick you up on indecency charges. We'll be fine as long as we don't cross the people at the laundromat who own these clothes. So what's the flow chart? Let's start with what we know. A scrub team tries to nuke us in the middle of the night, only we got lucky and stuffed them. The question, of course, is what have we done to earn midnight execution? Damn it, we're ARC employees. We enforce the laws. We believe in what the hand's doing, even though they step over the line sometimes. Maybe they nailed you for being soft on rogue techs like me. Any other ARC agents would have pulled my plug by now. Ah, that wouldn't get us cleaned. Maybe a rebuke, but we could have told them you were a singer with data on other hackers. A few months ago, we tagged some would-be deck jocks that were programming an illegal sea space. Let a couple of kids skip, maybe give them a second chance. But again, they wouldn't scrub us over something like that. I know the two of you are straight lines, but even you can't believe that transgressions only punishes the wicked. This is a tyranny, man. A government with supreme power. Clearly, the first move is to learn what the hand has, or thinks it has, on us. If it were me, my first move would be to a 787 heading to Africa. The coastal African republics have become a high-tech free zone of sorts. 
A little rough, but the hand don't reach that far yet. No way. We aren't running. She's right, Dante. We've spent our lives enforcing this government's laws. I won't end it all as a fugitive. We're getting some answers even if we have to go to Celine Solix to get him. Where do we start? Do you think we can trust Frank Jersey? Of course we can. Who's Jersey? He's an art captain, our superior. I've never known him to act on political motives, just the opposite. He's taken great risks defending people from corrupt busts. Lives in Georgetown. He would have the official email on our scrub. Nick Cannon. He's jacked into the Voice of God news nets almost constantly. He's one of the few people who get the news before it's run through the Decency Council's censors. Fortunately, he owes us for overlooking some information theft. Don't you two arrest anybody? We figured he was a good person to have our hooks into. Looks like we were right. You two'd have to stroll right into Voice of God headquarters on the mall. It's too risky. Nah, Voice is usually low security. And we don't plan on using the front door. So that's it. Cannon and Jersey. Not much. I wouldn't trust anyone else not to turn us in. I might be able to fill your need. I know someone with links to the front. I don't know how desperate you are or whether you have any faith left in the system, but you may want to see what the other side has to offer. It's funny, almost. A week ago, we would have busted you for telling us that. I won't mention him again, but if you're looking for new friends, his name's Aldous Xenon. You can find him in a bodega in Chinatown near Gallery Place. I'll pass your names to him. He's a little rough, not your usual type, but you can trust him. We'll keep it in mind. We certainly need all the help we can get. Don't deal me out. I owe you two for not feeding me to transgressions. You always have a hiding place here. Take that extra key over there. It's yours. I'll surf the underground network, see if anything's being wrapped out about your case. Well, thank you very much. The pad of a cybertech artist. You get the idea that the occupant is apt to strum the guitar while working on the computer. The art from around the world gives the impression that he's well-traveled, too, and in more ways than one. The heroic Rachel Brock. That wasn't exactly too descriptive. At last, a friendly face. Dante Scrivener, underground hacker and amateur philosopher, grants you safe haven in his apartment. You never turned him in, although he is guilty of minor misuses of technology, because he has kept you informed on tech innovations in the underworld. You have become friends over the years. The noble Gideon Ashanti. Well, at least his is just as long as ours. The electronic key to Dante's apartment. Well, we may as well pick us up now. The electronic key to Dante's apartment. You just told us that. I believe we are done here. Okay, yes we are. Now let's access the map. As you can see here, we have a number of places that we can visit. This is where we are now. That is one of the leads that we have been given. And the more was mentioned. For the Watergate. Interesting. All right, let's stop at Georgetown. Where 
where better to go when you're on the run? The kitchen of a cop. A safe, warm, middle-class place to discuss the fact that someone is trying to hunt you down and kill you. Your trusted Ark superior, Captain Frank Jersey, is alone in his kitchen. He seems to have been waiting for you. You've always found his calm authority reassuring. Scrub list? Ah, there's our names. Is that Brian Avery Machine? Or is that just Brian Avery and then Machine is New Line? I guess we will find out soon. Cappuccino, anyone? Maybe some tea with a hit of bourbon in it? You must be freezing after your jog about town in your underwear. Yeah, we figured you'd have heard by now. I saw it on the scrub team's playback footage. You two kicked some ass. I didn't know you had that in you. Neither did we. Amazing what surprise and fear can do for your combat reflexes. We know it's probably stupid to come here, Frank, but we need to talk to someone on the inside who we can trust. We know the Hand might be watching this place. Screw the Hand! I'm an ARC captain. This is the last place they'd look for you. My standing orders are to scrub rogues like you. You know me. <laughs> I always follow orders. Why was a scrub team trying to burn us in our bed? Who gave the order and what the hell for? We've done our duty for hand and country. Is this our payback? We haven't done anything. That's probably what most of the people you feed to the scrubs said. Those people were sinners, Captain. They deserve what they got. I forgot. You two are believers in the guiding hand. You thought being narcs for reality containment was doing God's work. Still feel that way now? There's got to be an explanation. There was some kind of mistake. Don't play games with me, girl. The hand has something on you. What have you done? Is this interrogation 101, Frank? If our scrub went over the net, then you know what they're charging us with. That's why we're here. You tell us what we've done. You want to keep me in the dark? Fine. Maybe you don't know why they want you. Maybe you do. Here's what I know. The official charges are crap. Come on! You mean this kind of stuff doesn't trickle down to grunts like you? Educate us, Captain. Obviously we need it. The hands rule isn't exactly the rule of law. It's not what they charge you with, but the fact that they charge you at all. Hmm. Officially. You're in violation of the Artificial Realities and Extra Numinal Environments Design, Programming, and Transportation Act. You've been accused of dealing in pornographic virtuals involving human-demon coupling. They said we're skin dealers? That's ludicrous. Look at my case history. Huh? I've burned whole libraries of pornographic books and virtuals. It's a frame job, Captain. Of course it's a frame job. You two are either guilty of something else, in which case... I'll take you in myself. Or you become politically unpalatable for some reason and they want to whack you for it. So somebody in Ark wants us dead? Uh, someone in Ark, or transgressions, or the Pentagon, uh, somebody with some connections because they've linked you with Mr. Beautiful. And they only do that when they're desperate to whack somebody. Beautiful is one of transgressions' dirtiest little secrets. Association with him is as good as a guilty verdict. They accuse someone of running in a narcotics or porn or illegal reality scheme, fabricate a link to Beautiful, haul his ass in, he signs a confession implicating the accused. Beautiful's freed on some technicality, and the accused gets scrubbed, or worse. Let me guess. Beautiful's fingered us as accomplices in a virtual skin ring. Now that's a line and a half. That's a good guess. Where do we find this Assyrian scumbag? He's got a hangout in the back room of a speakeasy called The Interface out in Foggy Bottom. Watch your step. 
Everybody in the place fancies themselves a badass, and most of them actually are. I probably should have waited another 20 seconds or so before I chose the first option. But at least we have got more information on Mr. Beautiful. Then we're finished. The two of us can't fight transgressions. Best you can try to do is avoid them. They'll try for you again, that's for sure. Still, there might be a way to make transgressions work for you, if you've got the guts to try it. I don't know about guts. Will desperation do? Not everyone in transgressions is a despot hiding behind holy robes. There are some men and women of integrity trying to make the system work. One of them's an acquaintance of mine, named Jean Saint Mouchois. He's a compulsive diarist, makes entries in a voice journal every day. He's a straight arrow, by the book guy, so you can't risk confronting him. You'll have to break into his office, and he has passwords and everything in the system. But if you can break those, you might tap into what he knows about your case. I know that's not much, but it's a start. His office is in Sin Central, the transgressor's complex right smack in the Federal Triangle. Scrubs were out in force that night, which suggests a sweep, which means one of two things. You're either really involved in something dirty, in which case I'll haul your asses in myself, or transgressions is using one fabricated crime to wipe up a whole lot of undesirables. Question is, why are you two loyal arc agents suddenly dirt? Who were the other germs? Any pattern to the hits? Only name that meant anything to me was Swivel O'Leary. He ran a speak called the Interface over in Foggy Bottom. Wild place. Mr. Beautiful hangs there. Transgressions had been tolerant to this point, but they finally got around to O'Leary. Well, who knows? Transgressions is shadowy in its accusations because it answers to nobody. Virtual porn's a popular setup. They get you for the sexy stuff and for the VR. Not much I can tell you because I haven't worked that turf in decades. <laughs> Pain in the ass, more than anything. Spend half your time busting horny kids and couples looking for a few new thrills. But beautiful deals in this stuff? That's not his usual game. Plenty of other demons for that. Stay in touch. I do what I can to watch your backs, but be careful. The hand's not finished with you two. I will try to be careful. Now, I don't believe that we can pick this list up, but I guess we can try to remember it. And now we have even more leads. It seems like this Mr. Beautiful is going to be a big person of interest to us. So let's start at Foggy Bottom. Yes, Imperator Solux? Avert your eyes from your Imperator. You are not fit to look upon me, much less serve me. How is it that you allow those corrupt Ark agents to escape the Hand? Well, we didn't expect anyone else to be in the apartment, so we... You didn't expect? Did you plan? Did you think? Were you not entrusted with an important task? Could you have taken your head out of your ass long enough to point a gun at a couple of sleeping, small-time civil servants and pull the trigger? Well, but I... but I... You disgust me. You with your muscles and your firepower, pistol-whipped like a coward. Do you realize that the only thing separating you from an ape is an opposable thumb? As for your balls, you obviously haven't been using them either. So they will be mine. Take him! Get him out of my sight! <laughs> 